Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by The Last. Delighted to be joined by the man himself, still wearing the NBA top, still got the American influence, Mikey McKinson. How are you, mate? Oh, good. I want to go back there. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It's been a while since LA. Um, Team McKinson yeah. take over in the City of Angels. That was a good week, wasn't it? I know everything didn't go to plan exactly, but it was a good week. I was the one laughing when I got on the flight at the end. I got, I got paid amazing to fight somebody that didn't really want to commit against me. So, although I, although I didn't um, get the life-changing fight that I went for, I was when I got on that business class flight home, I was the one laughing. <laughs> Love it. I know you took some time away uh, since you returned, but has it just been sort of training and waiting for something since? That's it. I've been ticking over. I'm always in the gym all year round anyway. Um, been on holiday, um, turned another year older, uh, but just waiting for a date. Um, I thought I would have got one by now. Uh, obviously, obviously, I've been getting a little bit impatient on social media and stuff like that. But, but yeah, like it's hard, isn't it? I just went to America. I had this although it wasn't a big name it was a massive occasion so the next fight I still want a big fight you know I deserve it um so I've been on it I've been on it Lee and Matt and see to see what could be next obviously the original plan for LA was Virgil Ortiz let's talk about him and um well we've got loads to talk about but first off it was reported that him and Avenisium was all systems go um, August the 6th was the date, I think. Since then, Eddie said he's heard rumours David's pulled out. Frank said they're still working on things. It's all just a little bit up in the air between them two at the moment. Yeah, I don't know. I've expressed that if there is any problems with them two, I can be ready August 6th. You know, I I thought I should have really got the opportunity and I should have got an offer because I did go and I turned up to fight him, you know. And when I was out in America, they said, oh, like we would reschedule later on down the line. And I was at the time, I was saying, I'm not going to count on that because there was rumours he wouldn't stay at 147. So why would I just hold on to the thought that they'd reschedule? Um, but when I heard that he's going to fight at 147 again, I thought I deserved it. But if it's not me, the only other person that does really deserve a big fight is Avanesian. So do you know what I mean? I won't cry, I won't. Um, throw my toys out of the pram because Avanesian deserves a big fight he does um, but I just thought it should have been me I thought it should have been me Obviously Virgil's his own man and I suppose who he fights will ultimately lie with him but would you hold Golden Boy at all accountable if this fight between you two doesn't eventually happen even if it's past the Avanesian fight? Of course uh, and I, I deserve it and like it's when they said Ortiz versus Avanesian. On Twitter, there was a lot of Americans that were were not happy it wasn't me. Do you know? It, it, it's not happy it wasn't me. So I don't know if I'm plan B, but I've expressed it. I can be ready August 6th. Today's June the 1st. Camp started today for me, um, regardless of if I've got a date penciled in or not. Um, you know, eating better now, um, training better. Uh, I'll be ready for August sixth. If it's not Aven if it's not Ortiz, then somebody else. You know, I want a date penciled in ASAP. Would you find it a bit fishy if Virgil was to fight again at one four seven? I know, look, considering a lot of the talk, and I will stress, it was just talk. But a lot of the talk that he was struggling around the weight. And like I said, this is, this was just talk at the time. I have to say, yeah, and nobody truly knows except from his team. But I was in LA for two weeks. I was around people that know him I was around other teams and people from LA and the talk was they didn't know how he made it in the past so they believed the rumours as well so um, like I can't sit on here and, and start saying oh it's because of this it's because of that because nobody knows like like what happens in his team and stuff like that um, so I'm not going to bad mouth him. I didn't bad mouth him on fight week. Didn't bad mouth his team. Um, he's better now. He's fighting at one four seven. Uh, he didn't pick me. Well, the team didn't pick me. Um, 
I, I thought I deserved it. But other than me, Avanessian does deserve it. So, so yeah. Where would you say this ultimately leaves you? Um, obviously, you've got a good ranking and people know who you are. But I don't. Know, I know you hung a lot of hope in this Virgil Ortiz yeah. thing. Yeah, I think the the fact that I still fought in America is a positive because people know who I am over there. Um, I said, I even tweeted recently. Okay. I wanted Ortiz, but it looks like I'm not getting Ortiz. Let's have Rocha. They, their team's up for. I'm up for. Uh, Golden Boy are up for. But I thought I would have received some type of offer by now. You know, because that was the talk straight after the fight. Before the fight, straight after the fight, that was the talk. They said they were interested. We're a few months down the line now. Like, I haven't received an offer for anybody. So... I don't know where that leaves me. I am testing or I'm getting impatient. Uh, but regardless, June 1st, I've started camp. So whatever date I'm giving, whatever opponent I'm giving, I'm in camp now. I do want to talk about the interview that I've done with Connor because I know you saw it. Um, mm. He said it's really you and him in that bracket above the next set of guys, the likes of Lewis Crocker, Chris Congo, who obviously you beat, um, which I know as a statement that I think you said on someone else's podcast, a statement that obviously you you agree with, kind of you and him now in in that that echelon for, for the British welterweights. Yeah, it is us two now. See, Khan's retired and, and Brooks retired and stuff. It is us two leading the way. Um, like, there's a great mix beneath us, but they are beneath us. We're on the way up. We're not on the way down. So why would we look at them guys? It, like, no disrespect. They're in a great mix to fight each other, but don't like you got got to remember the names I'm looking at are the Virgil Ortiz's and 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 Alexis Rogers. They're at the domestic level looking at domestic names. So Connor's got a point. Um, it is us two, and it will be like us two closing in on on world title fights sooner than the rest. Um, like I beat Congo, what was it, fifteen months ago? And I've beaten clearly since then. He's fought once against, uh, I don't know, what's he had 15 wins and six losses, the guy, something like that. Um, I fought since then, Ronowski 19 and one. And this American that was, I would actually rate the American as the best fighter I fought. Look, maybe not on paper, but he, he uh, gave me. In terms me of you two matching up. Yeah, like as, as, he as a get, style, he gave me more problems than other people. He was very slick. Although I won the fight comfortably, I, I like I had to be like be alert the whole way through the fight. He was very quick. Um, he made me think. Uh, so yeah, like compared to where I am, compared to fifteen months ago when I beat Congo, compared to his, I know he's got a fight coming up and stuff, but. I'm way past that. And I, I still think Congo, out of the domestic guys beneath us, probably one of the best. So um, it just proves where I am in my career, where Connor is, but like in his career too. Um, so if it was a domestic guy that I was looking to fight, it'd only be Connor right now. Um, and yeah, and that's not going to happen. So as a fan, the, the people beneath me, what a great division. What a great division. So, um, but yeah, I'm not looking at them guys. You said the fight, the way you said the fight between you and Connor won't happen was almost kind of like in a dismissive sense because if it does happen, it won't be soon we get that. Um, did you hear what he said about your style the other day? Because in that same interview, I, I, yeah, I kind of, it kind of made it seem like it was something that didn't interest him because of the... Mm style and, and the way you fight did you kind of take it like that or did you take it as just kind of oh he's just slamming my style and, uh, and that's yeah it. one it's it's a funny one with connor in it because he is respectful but then he gives me them slide digs he does and I'd, there was a time where i was purely invested on what he had to say and, and stuff like that but look where i am right now i'm I'm on my path. He's on his path. He said, what was it he said, that maybe down the line for a world title fight. 
So, so that means he's not interested in fighting me yet. So um, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to think too much into what he has to say. Um, he is respectful in a way. Um, I'm respectful to him. Well, it is what it is. Uh, hopefully, one day down the line, I do get that fight. But, you know, until then, I'll keep accepting fights with the uh, killers of the division. Thoughts on a fight between him and Keith Furman, which would potentially be a WBO eliminator, of course, the governing body that you've been associated with for the last six, seven fights of your career? I entered the WBA rankings now, haven't I? Today? Number 10? Uh, Is it number 10? Number 10, yeah. Um, so, what I don't get is, although I didn't fight Ortiz, I still fought and I still have a, a WBO like ranking of WBO bouts, stuff like that. They moved me down. They moved me from third to fifth to pave way for Connor. And I don't understand. But um, when it cut out, then Lee and just FaceTimed me. I thought I had fight news. Whenever, when, whenever he um, whenever he FaceTimes me or, or, or calls me, in my head, I'm thinking. He's got news for me. <laughs> but no, um, no fight news just yet. Potentially soon. But um, but yeah, like the rankings, I don't know. Because I'm, I've been active and and stuff like that. So I thought I wouldn't lose my spot. But fifth is still good. I'm fifth by the WBO. Tenth by the WBA. Um, so there's huge fights to be made regardless. The bigger the name, the better for me. Uh, so, so, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm in a good position. Um, I'm just waiting for that phone to call. Just in terms of Connor and Keith as a fight, I know there's still loads that could happen with Connor, as I mentioned in the interview the other day. But just in terms of them two, if they were to fight, how do you see that playing out? And do you like it as a fight? I do. And it will probably be... The first time Connor would be in a fight where I think, okay, fair play. Um, that don't get like I'm not trying to disrespect him or stuff like that, but he has been huge favourite majority of the times, um, and there's always that argument. He's too old. He's past it. He's this. He's that, which everybody gives him, even though he does finish the job in good style every time. But I think he'll get a lot of credit especially for the people that give him a lot of negativity. Like, you can't not respect that that choice of opponent, you know. He's fighting Keith Furman. It speaks for itself. So, um, if it if it does happen, fair play to him. I mean, Do you know what's good, Oscar, right? I am... Um, every interview I've had, Connor's name's mentioned over the last few years, right? That's just normal. But now... I'm being mentioned in his. I'm being mentioned in all of his. It's funny how things change. Um, it's funny how things change. So, so yeah, I'm doing well. He's doing well. Uh, until I can get the opportunity to fight him, I've got respect for him because whenever I've seen him, like whenever I bumped into him or seen him, he's always been respectful to me. He has. Um, he has said things on certain interviews and stuff like that. But like I said, I'm not too bothered about that anymore. Well, when it does happen, it's going to be mega. Because it will. Yeah. As long as it don't as, do a calm As long brook. as we keep winning. As long as it don't do a calm brook. It wouldn't be me. Listen, I... Listen, like, I I want big fights right now. I turned 28 the other day. Um, I've boxed on small hall for far too long. Um... It's been just over a year on the big stage. And people know I accept the biggest fights. I expressed the other day that, like, when there was them rumours that Avanesian and Ortiz are, is happening, not happening, I said, listen, just send me the same contract I had I had in the first place and I'll, I'll be plan B. You know, it's easy. I, like, it's not hard to negotiate with Michael McKinson. Uh, but my wife has shot right up. Told no money. Love it. I'll do just before we want to go, actually. I was going to leave it there, but 
just a quick word on uh, the retirement of Amir and Kel. Um, obviously, cool. both bowed out fighting each other in a fight we wanted to see and finally did get to see, be it the fight it perhaps would have been in its prime. But uh, yeah, just a word on two people that we can we can call British boxing legends now. Now they've left the game. I know. Um, like I, I met them both last year. Well, I met Calm when I was younger, but I met him last year. I, it was the day after I beat Ranowski. I went to London. And I, in, for, for the night in a hotel, and he, he spotted me. He watched the boxing the night before. Comp- like he spotted me. Like do you know what I mean? Like what he did. Like seventeen year up, seventeen silver in the Olympics, paved way for the GB athletes of today. You know what I mean? He's done a lot for boxing, Amir Khan. Don't, I don't think he gets a lot of credit, like that he he deserves. Like really. Um, and Cal Brook, do you know what I mean? He's one of the best weights of the last 20 years. Um, gr- great fighters, but it is time for the next generation. They, they've uh, they've done amazing things for boxing, earned a lot of money, and can now bow out very rich and healthy. Um, now, it's, now it's paved way for the likes of me, Connor, the, the other people coming up that don't really get a lot of mentions. There's, there's lots of um, good fighters on the 147 uh, rankings domestically, you know. There's Echo, uh, Lewis Crocker, Chris Congo. There's, there's lots. Lim Taylor. Uh, but they don't really get a lot of mention. And it w- that was me for a long time. Oh, that was me for a long time. It was never really mentioned. And then and then all of a sudden, bam, I'm on the big stage. So, uh, so yeah, I'm rooting for them all. I'm rooting for them all. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Center. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.